Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Jesus This, Jesus That. 5 a.m. prayer. It's pretty early. <laughs> it's still dark outside. Um, but we're so grateful that we could be here. <clears throat> My voice is still sleeping. It will wake up as we go. A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of this beautiful morning. We're going to give everybody just a few minutes just to join on. If there's anybody you feel that should be here hanging out with us this morning, holler at them. <laughs> holler at them, tell them to pull through and tell them we're on. And uh, we're just going to spend some time in the word and prayer. And unlike Thursday, you know, you participate by listening and writing down notes and you know, going over the notes again and just meditating upon the word of God, you know, while we, we, we share and even after. And today's responsibility is um, primarily <clears throat> for us to come together and pray. And that's the key, um, is for us to come together and pray. So you're not here to watch, uh, you're here to participate, praying. Um, I want to encourage you to wake up and get comfortable and let's hear what God has in store for us today. Um, you'll see the old school members of Jesus, this Jesus, that are all saying good morning. Um, they're not just saying it because that's what we say in the morning. But we decided a long time ago that good morning will be a trigger and reminder to us that God is good and his mercies endure forever. And that his mercies are new every single morning. So when we wake up and say good morning, it is with that in mind to say, Ah, oh, great is the Lord. Good morning. Uh, wonderful are his mercies. Good morning. <laughs> his healing and restoration is like no other. Good morning. His presence and goodness to us is like no other. Good morning. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Good morning. We shall be glad and we shall rejoice in it. A very big good morning. Um, so when we say it, it's, it's not to just fill up the gaps. No, it's a, it's, it's a reminder to ourselves that he is good. He is good. He's a good, good father. And he loves us unconditionally. And that is a grace in itself. So we don't take it lightly. Um, we don't understep it. We don't half step it. We don't play it down. No, we say it with our chest. <laughs> it's a good morning. Because we serve a good God. Amen. 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 Uh, Dibs, I just check the sound there for me, my brother. And let's see if we're good and ready to roll. Oh, I even forgot to put on earrings. Ha, la, la. <laughs> Had quite a tough night. Um, but I probably will go see the doctor a little bit later on today. So let's see if we can push. Um... Somebody says 162540 gang. Yes. I she met such a lovely lady at the airport. I hope she's watching. She was with her family. And um, she just goes 162540. <laughs> and uh, we were blessed enough to be in the same in the same aircraft. Um, it's always such a pleasure bumping into you guys. Um, and just the words of encouragement that you give. Yo, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. It means so much to us. Um, last week, is it last week? When we were on our way to Cape Town, you know, we had some of the ladies, uh, one of the ladies rather, at the airport, kind of stopped the team members. She was like, yo, this is Jesus, this is Jesus, that right? We're like, yes, that's us. You know, and she gave us words of encouragement. So we really do appreciate the messages, you know, when we bump into you guys and spaces. It goes a long way to encourage us um, to keep going to keep going. Alrighty, let's get into it. Um, we'll start here. How about you pick a friend? That's what we do every single Friday morning. Pick a friend. Pick a friend. So this is anybody on the live. If you see the name, there's plenty of names here. Um, there's just about 2,000 of us here gathered this morning. So there is a name for everybody. Alright, pick a name. Um, 
and choose that person this morning. You can tag them. You don't have to tag them. And um, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. We're we choosing a friend. Are you going to pray for somebody this morning? Why? It's what we do. It's who we are. We pray. We stand in the gap. We open up our mouths. We call on to our Father, not only for ourselves, but for our friends and family, our nation, our country, the world. Many things are happening in the world. And then all you have to do is open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. And that's exactly what we're going to do this morning. So choose a friend. And once you've located the friend, I want you to pray for them this morning. We always say, speak a good word over them. What is the good word? Speak the vocab. How do I pray for someone? How do I pray for myself? We use the word of God as our vocabulary. Uh, the word of God is our vocabulary. What the word says is what we say. So let's take whatever position that you're taking. It can be somebody who's here or somebody who's at home, somebody who's, on been, who's been on your mind or somebody you've been standing in agreement with. I want you to go ahead and choose them this morning and uh, let's pray for them. I've got Kanya Joy. It was a joy. Kaya. Kanya. Did I say that right? I hope I said that right. I'm going to be praying with her this morning. Choose whoever you're choosing. And um, let's trust God for us standing in the gap. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you're a faithful God. Early in the morning, we will see the face of the Lord. Here we are, Father God, in your presence, conscious of who you are what you are to us, how you love us, how you show us mercy and grace. And, and this morning, Lord God, we stand as friends, as brothers and sisters in the gap for our loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord God, that you show yourself as God over their lives. But you might, I pray for Kanye this morning, Lord God. I pray that your mercy is in you every morning, that you are faithful towards her. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you cover her with your goodness and your mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you that it is well with her. Thank you, Lord God, for all the good you've deposited in her. Thank you, Lord God, that you set her apart, that you made her a fortified city, that you cover her with your protection. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that it is your presence and your protection that you offer her in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessing that's over her life. Thank you for the covering over her life. Thank you for the mercy that's over her life. Thank you, Lord God, of how you love her, how you show her mercy, how you, you, you continue to show strength over her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This morning, Lord God, we stand in agreement, Lord God, for her wellness. We stand in agreement, Lord God, for the peace of God that reigns over her. We stand in agreement, Lord God, for your protection over her. We stand in the agreement, Lord God, for her health, the soundness of her mind, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your word teaches us, Lord God, that you've not given us a spirit of fear. We nullify any spirit of fear that is trying to raise itself in her life. We call it to its place. We remind it of the word of God and God's promises. And that is we've not been given a spirit of fear, but we've been given a spirit of love and of a sound mind and soundness. And that's what we speak over her. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you that it is well with her family. It is well with her space. It is well with her career. That Father God, you who creates streams in deserts will create opportunities for her where she needs them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing over her and her family. I speak, Lord God, your grace that surpasses all our understanding, Lord God. Our grading, our standards, Lord God. The one that fetches us wherever we are, the one that pulls us out wherever we are, the one that protects us wherever we are, the one that keeps us wherever we are. Lord God, we speak that type of grace over her this morning. Come on, pray. Pray over them. Pray over them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that God will be clear about mandates to them, that they will hear the voice of God, that they will be quick to be willing to follow through on God's instructions, that they will yearn after a life of holiness and righteousness, that, that, that they will seek the face of the Lord daily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that they will work out their salvation. Come pray. That it is well with them. That all those who are feeling any sense of depression and, and, and anxiety, Lord God, we speak your peace over them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, pray. Pray over them this morning. 
it is well with them pray pray speak a good word speak a good word over them mm, speak a good word over them they finances lord god you are the provider in the mighty name of jesus christ we lack nothing with you in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you that we lack nothing come on say it over the life they lack nothing they lack nothing everything pertaining unto life whether it's finances it's peace it's joy it's mercy Lord, you give it to them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The provision comes from you. Life, life in abundance comes from you. Ooh, peace, peace that surpasses all understanding comes from you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Strength comes from you. We speak strength over their lives this morning. Come on. Speak a good word over them. They're blessed. They're covered. They are loved. Ooh, somebody needs to know that this morning. They are loved unconditionally. God loves them. Father, we just speak your embrace over them. That they may know you. Ooh, that they may walk with you. That they may experience your love. That they may know your voice. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. It is well with you. And the only song I sing in my heart. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Mm. Come on, just let God love on you this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Thank you that you're mindful of us. Thank you. That you're so careful with us. Thank you for your patience with us. Thank you. For how you surround us with your mercy and your love and kindness. Thank you. Thank you that you love us. Mm, some of us, Lord God, even struggle to love ourselves, but yet you love us. Some of us, our parents did not give us love, yet you love us. Some of us, Lord God, we yearning for love from our spouse and those around us, but, but yet you love us. You love us. You love us. You love us. I don't know who needs to know that this morning, that God loves us. You, he is so mindful of you. He's so, so mindful of you. He has not forgotten you. You are not lost in the way words. He is intentional about you. And I know it seems kind of foggy right now. And, and I know it seems kind of cloggy right now. And it seems like you may have misplaced him. And he's saying he is right there. In all circumstances, he is right there. Loving on you, protecting you, keeping you. He loves you this morning. Come on, we're here to pray this morning. We're here to pray. You're not here to watch me, you're here to pray. Thank you for your love, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray that you send your embrace on those who need it this morning. Thank you that nothing separates us from your love. Thank you that you so freely give it. We don't have to coerce you. We don't have to manipulate you. We don't have to work you your love is there help us receive it this morning in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah okay let's give it some word shema has
loves us, loves us. See, the devil will have you convinced that you gotta run around and change yourself and mold yourself into something else. And and and, and God is saying, as you are. Uh, 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 the world's standard of love is you got to do something for me and and in return I will uh, give you loyalty and love and God is like as you are see he loved you first he loved you first mm. He loved you while you still did not recognize him as God, while you still had no time for him, while you, you were still living your best life, while you had no regard for him. He, he was still madly in love with you. And he's in love with you now. He's in love with you now. Amen. Let's get into some word. Get into some word. Last night we looked at um, Mark 6. We looked at a very, very popular part of scripture. It's this woman with her child. She's in the crowd. And what they had packed for lunch becomes what feeds a multitude. And um, Jesus performs this miracle. And we, we conclude yesterday that the miracle <laughs> was, was, was them running in the direction of God, even after they had been sitting under the word, even after miracles and ministrations had taken place. The minute they saw them move in, 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 in the direction, they followed through. I don't want this to be too loud. And, and we concluded yesterday that God has compassion for us. He's caring and loving towards us. And that he was more concerned with feeding them and recognizing that their spirits were hungry, that they needed a good shepherd, somebody who will sit with them. more than just food but he's beautiful because he's concerned about both and makes room to meet both but we concluded yesterday that they did not come for the fish but they came for the bread of life they did not come for the fish they came for the bread of life. What does this mean to you and I? How does this change our prayer life? What does it demand on our behavior moving forward? How does it shift our minds in relation to our relationship with God? Uh, what does this mean if, 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 if they were not running towards the fish but but running towards the bread of life we we then have to ask ourselves the question firstly would we run on foot and take the journey towards Jesus not because we want anything from him but because we're hungry to hear what he has to say? Or are we the ones that are enticed by knowing that there will be fish and bread there served later? Kind of like the people who go to weddings, not for the union, but 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 for the food and, and, and the celebrations and the drinks. Are we are we are we ready to run after our maker? Or should there be an offering of fish and bread 
to entice us. And I really want us to, to stop here today and ask ourselves honestly that has our relationship with God come to that? That if there's no fish and bread, we're not going. If, if my needs are not, are not met, I'm not going. If, if he doesn't perform the miracle that I need him to perform, I'm not going. We concluded last night that they did not go for the fish, but they went for the bread of life. And, and maybe that's a starting point for you and I this morning to really evaluate our hearts, to really evaluate our heart posture toward God, to really say, Lord, did I come for the fish and bread or did I come for the bread of life? And I want you to honestly ask it yourself and, and answer yourself. And it's not that you feel condemned. I hope you understand me. You know, a lot of you guys are always coming for us. No, no, no. Nobody's coming for anybody. It's so that we can honestly look at our faith. It's so that we can honestly look at our motive towards God. It's so that we can, can honestly look at our hearts towards God. That, that, Lord, why am I here? Did I come for the fish of bread? Or did I come for the bread of life? Mm. Is it life that I want from you? Or is it the temporary things that will satisfy me? Is it, is it you I chase after? Was it the fish and the bread? Mm. We're not making anybody uncomfortable this morning. It's, 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 we've got to ask ourselves that after a long day of, the Bible says in verse 30, Mark 6, that the disciples gathered around Jesus to give him a report on what they had taught and what they had done. In fact, the Bible tells us that they were getting in the boat to move away so that they can get some rest. Mm. Meaning that they had given all they could give that day. It was now time for them to rest. The Bible tells us that they ran on foot. A journey that Jesus and the disciples took on a boat. They got to the other side before him. It's the eagerness and the zeal to go towards the things of God. It's, it's, it's the doing it at all costs. It's, it's the, I'm going to get out of my comfort zone to find you. I'm going to get out of the ordinary to reach wherever you are. I'm going to leave this place that I have made my comfort zone and I'm going to run in the direction. The Bible tells us they left the, the towns they were in and on foot ran in the direction. They didn't leave their houses and run on foot for fish and bread. In fact, one might argue there was probably fish and bread and more in their houses already. So, so they left their sustenance. They, they left the comfort of their homes. They left what they knew could sustain them because they recognized that this that was here in their homes did not have the power and the capacity to give them longevity like they would if they ate from the bread of life. They did not go for fish and bread. They, they went to the bread of life. And, and that's the question this morning. That as you wake up every morning, are you running towards Jesus because of the fish and the bread? Or is it his presence that you're looking for? See, the Bible says Jesus then had compassion on them. And he realized that there are sheep without a shepherd. 
and then took his place as king and lord and the good shepherd. And the Bible says he sat with them and he taught them many things. He deposited what was in him to them. He, he spent time with them. He fed their spiritual hunger. He, he, he resurrected in them something far beyond. See, they were still desperate even after a long day. And maybe this is our prayer point this morning. Bread of life. Bread of life. We're, we're, we're running towards the bread of life. We're, we're not going to minimize our walk with God and our Christianity and our faith and salvation into this transactional exchange that we do. No, no, no. We're running after a good shepherd. Speak to your heart. Speak to yourself and say, Father, where have I been? Hmm? Am I running on foot for fish and bread or am I running towards the bread of life? And maybe this morning we make a commitment to say, Lord God, from this point further, the bread of life is what we're running after. Because the Bible tells us that you say you are the bread of life and whoever comes to you will not hunger or thirst anymore. And that, that's the kind of feeding that we want. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Say to yourself, I, I run after the bread of life. I'm in pursuit of the bread of life. I understand that with the bread of life, I will not hunger or thirst any longer. Uh, uh, what the fish and the bread cannot do, he can do. What the fish and the bread cannot sustain, he can sustain. What the fish and the bread cannot put together, he can put together. He feeds me from within. My pursuit is the bread of life. It's not the fish and bread. It's the bread of life. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this morning, Lord God, you are the bread of life. That is what we're running for. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word makes it so clear for us to understand, Lord God, that the pursuit is you. The pursuit is you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, forgive us for where we've made it about fish and bread, where our celebration has been about the fish and bread and the multiplication of it, Lord God. We understand this morning, Lord God, that in you, mm, bread of life, there is life in abundance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that the fish and bread are a default to your presence. The fish and bread are a default to sitting at your feet. The fish and bread are a default to chasing after you. The fish and bread are a default being where you are. The fish and bread are a default of your presence and dwelling in it. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for the fish and bread, but more than that, thank you for you. Thank you for being the bread of life. Thank you that with you we hunger no more. We thirst no more. We're satisfied. Thank you that we are satisfied. We run after your bread of life. It's you we seek after, it's you we pursue. Ooh, we are loyal to you. We prioritize you. We put you forward, great King. We magnify you and we lift up your name this morning, Lord God. Bread of life, we feed from you. We understand that man cannot live on fish and bread alone. We, we understand that we cannot live on our riches alone. We understand that we cannot live on our education alone. We understand that we cannot live from just our spices, spouses alone. We understand that we cannot live from just our children alone. We understand that we cannot live just by our status and how much we're able to do. We understand that we can collect as much as we want, Lord God. That all these things are temporary, but there is bread that is life. And thank you, Lord God, that when we pursue you, shoo, that when we seek after you, we lack nothing. 
That's why when you say you are the bread of life, that those who are in you cannot hunger and thirst. You, you, you take care of all our needs. You, you, you say, seek me and my righteousness and everything shall be added. See, see, the way to the fish and the bread is not to run after the things, but it's to run after him. Thank you that in you we lack nothing. That, that in you, you will make us sit on green grass. Oh, you, you will delegate you, you will lift up whatever it is that we have and it will multiply. Thank you that the miracle is that we're with you. Mm. The miracle is that we're with you. See, the five fish, or oh, five, two fish and the five bread, without Jesus remain five loaves and two fishes. The miracle is you. You are the source. You are the vine. And this morning we glorify you for that, Jesus. How about you just go about it? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, that it's in you. It's in you. It's all in you. Ooh, the miracle is you. The miracle is access to you. The miracle is being reconciled to our Father. Ooh, the miracle is you. Thank you. Thank you, great King. Thank you, great King. Thank you, great king. Our next prayer point. Mm. In Mark 6, verses 34, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, the Bible says he had compassion. It says the Bible realized that they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. If we are like Christ and we heed to the great commission of God that Christ is in us that we are children of God and that we do as he says. Maybe this is a prayer point then for us this morning, that it's quite possible that we have not looked or seen God's people and had compassion over them. It's quite possible that we've lived our Christian lives and, and the chase was for the bread and the fish. And the chase was for God to do miraculous things in our lives. But on the way, as we're running towards him, we pass along the way his people and we have no compassion for them. God's people should lead our hearts to compassion. God's people should lead our hearts to compassion. It should encourage us to be like Christ in this moment. It should lead us to want to share the good things and the good news and the many things that God has given us. It should lead us to a place where we can love on God's people. See, see, it's impossible for you to walk with this God and have no love for his people. It's Matthew 22, verse 37. 
God introduces and gives an instructions and says, Thou shalt <laughs> love your God with all your heart and all your mind, with all your soul. And that this is the first and the greatest commandment. But that second to this greatest and the first commandment, God says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You've got to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind to be able to love yourself, which then gives you right of passage to love others, people. God's people should move us to love and compassion. 1 Corinthians 13, we know it. Love is patient. Love is kind. See, the disciples and Jesus here were, were getting in the boat not because of anything, ah, either than the fact that they were just tired. And, and one could look at us who are running towards Christ and go, Hey, I any chance in rest. Let him rest. But Jesus displays love on another level. He displays compassion on another level. He lives out 1 Corinthians 13, the A part. Love is patient. He was patient enough and compassionate enough to see that they needed a good shepherd. Ooh, do we see God's people? Do we see that they need a friend? Do we see that they need somebody to pray for them? Do we see that they need somebody to lay hands on them who are sick? Do we see that they need encouragement from those who know the word of God? Do we see that they need the word of God? Do we see that they need salvation? Do we see the large crowd and have compassion. This is our prayer point. Father, as you see them is how I want to see them. I want to be able to walk in this love. I want to be able to see your people and have compassion over them. Ooh. When you see them, do you just see a druggie and, and not see a child of God? Who needs a good shepherd when you see them you see an adulteress you don't see a person who needs a good shepherd when you see them you just see somebody who's uneducated and beneath you or, or do you see somebody that needs a good shepherd when you see them you don't just see somebody who's a divorcee you see somebody who needs a good shepherd when you see them you don't just see uh, early 2000 you see somebody who's looking and needing a good shepherd do you see them How you see them is how I want to see them. Because I want to exercise 1 Corinthians 13. I want to live out Matthew 22, 37. I want to love you, God, with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind. But I also want to execute the B part of that scripture. And that is to love them as I love myself. How do I love myself? The more I'm in Christ, I begin to see myself as he sees me. So I don't love myself because I'm good to be loved. I don't love myself because I'm worthy to be loved. I love myself because I live in the reality of the truth of God, that I am a child of God. So what more somebody else? Come on, pray over yourself this morning. As he sees them is how I will see them. But Father, we pray to have compassion. Teach us how to be compassionate. Teach us how to be patient. Teach us how to be loving. Teach us to see, open our eyes to see your children. Lord God, those who are in need of a good shepherd, let us be there, Lord God to offer them and invite them to this good shepherd, to tell them about the good shepherd we've bumped into, to tell them about the good shepherd who loves on us, to tell them about the good shepherd who watches over us, to tell them about the good shepherd who takes us to the green pastures, to tell them about the good shepherd who just not only gives us fish and bread, but, but fills us up from the inside out to a point where we are satisfied in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, let us see them like you see them. Give us the opportunity 
opportunity to speak Jesus to them. Give us the opportunity to share the good news with them. Give us the opportunity to love on them, pray for them, stand with them, God over them, pray over them, watch over them, disciple them. Give us the opportunity to do what you did. To have compassion over them. Oh, Lord God, I know you, you teach our hands to war, but, but teach our hearts to love. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When we see the desperation in people physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually, all the lees, where do we send them? See, the disciples were ready to send them to the countryside and the neighboring villages. Yet they were sitting with the maker of heaven and earth. Ooh, they were in God's presence. And the disciples thought it better for them to, to be let go so they can go and eat somewhere else. When they asked us, how did you get to where you're going, you know, is, 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 is your answer, your degree and your hard work or is it the fact that you were sitting by his feet? Mm. When, when they ask you how, how did you get the healing? Is it, is it, is it your doctor's numbers that you give or, or from the countryside and the village or, or, or is God the answer? When we recognize the desperation that they may have the need that they may have. We pray that we don't send them to the countryside or send them to the neighboring villages, but rather that we'll understand that right where they are, everything is provided for. And maybe we can leave them for two seconds and look at ourselves and say, Father, in the villages and the countrysides, we, we've been toiling around on the edges of you. We, we, we've been going to neighboring cities for solution and food and answers. But, 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 but Lord God, we understand that we have you. Come on, talk to God this morning. If I need something to eat, it's in you. If I need healing, it's in you. If I need provision, it's in you. If I need covering, it's in you. If I need protection, it's in you. If I need wisdom, it's in you. If I need anything, it's in you. In you, I lack nothing. Father, I will no longer go to the countrysides to get something to eat. I will no longer go to the neighboring villages to get something to eat, but, but I will be intentional about staying in your presence. Lord God, I'm intentional about staying by your feet. I'm intentional about hearing the many things that you have to teach me. Lord God, I will not step out. I will not go to neighboring countrysides or neighboring villages or towns, Lord God. But instead, Father God, I will stay by your feet. I will stay to hear the many things, Lord God. I understand that with you, I can eat everything and be satisfied. Thank you. Come on, pray. Pray, pray. Shema satayaka. I lack nothing. Lack nothing. My needs are met in you. I'm sustained in you. The Bible says they were satisfied. Hmm. No more neighboring cities and countries. He's all we need. Mm. In Jesus' name. I'm running out of time. Open your Bibles to Psalms 145. Psalms 
Psalms 145. We're looking specifically at verse 17. I'd like to stop somewhere. Maybe at verse 20. Psalm 145. Psalm 145. We lack nothing. Verse 17 says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways. He is faithful in all that he does. Mm. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. He is faithful in all that he does. We lack nothing. <laughs> We have everything in him. He, he, he is righteous in all his ways. So uh, in this, there's no circumstance that God doesn't appear as being righteous. There's, there's nothing that he does for you and others that he doesn't do from a place of faithfulness. He is faithful in all his ways. The Lord is near to all who call him. To all who call on him in truth. We're going to park there. The Lord is near to those who call him. Who call on him in truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Who call on him in truth. Truth is God's reality. Truth is God's word. You see, we call on him not based on our emotions. We call on him not based on, on, on what we the circumstances are. See, God is not circumstantial. We, we call on him on truth. But maybe let's start here is that you've got to call on him. I love that it says the Lord is near. Have you ever called somebody on the phone who's picking you up to ask them how far they are? And they say I'm right around the corner. The feeling you get in your heart is ease. If you were anxious the whole time asking them how far they are, the minute they tell you they're around the corner or they're almost there, or, or maybe you're standing waiting for your Uber, uh, the, the, the minute it starts saying one kilometers, and now it moves from the kilometers to saying 600 meters away, 300 meters away, something in you comes at an ease. Why? Because they are near. Call. Jeremiah 33 3 teaches us something. It says, Call to me, and I will answer. And tell you great and unsearchable things that you don't know. Jeremiah 33 3 Call unto me. And God says, I will answer. Mm. And I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you don't know. See, 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 the problem is we were trying to figure out things outside of God. We were trying to figure out things with, without calling him. We were sitting down and wrecking our brains and trying to figure out how is this healing going to come? How is this job going to come? How is this answer going to come? And God says, I'm near to those who call me. And, and, and not only am I near to those who call me, I answer. And, and when I answer, I just don't answer for the sake of answering. I answer to tell you great things, unsearchable 
things, things you don't know, no ear has heard, no eye has seen. Shaya Baba. When you call, you will find out that I'm near. When you call, I will tell you great mysteries. There's two things happening here. It's only when you call him, you'll know that he's near. <laughs> it's only when you call him that he begins to tell you great and unsearchable things. Call him. Call on him. Ooh, be consistent in showing up. This speaks of relationship. This speaks of showing up. This speaks of consistency. This speaks of knowing that he is your dwelling place. This speaks of, ooh. That it is in him that he reveals these great and, and unsearchable things. These mysteries, these 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 marvelous things. He 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 he. It's in him. It's in relationship. Call him. Call him. Verse nineteen. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. Fear him. In fact, I can even stop here today. Fear him. <laughs> Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. That the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the genesis of wisdom. Meaning there's more wisdom to come. He will tell you great and unsearchable things. Fear him. What do we mean by fear the Lord? Recognize his lordship over your life. Have reverence for him. Know that he is God. Know that he is ruler. Know that he is above all things. Fear him. See, see, all of us here in this life are scared of our moms. <laughs> we fear them. There's a look she can give you. There's a way she calls your name that will make you get up and run in the direction. But also, we know that that is the greatest place we can find love. There's nowhere else where we can receive love like we receive love from our moms and our parents. But in the same breath, if they say, Hey, la. <laughs> You understand, they're not saying hela out of a place of hatred, but it's from a place of love. Fear him. It's the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 10, 27 says, The fear of the Lord prolongs the days of those who fear him. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened fear him don't don't treat him like a second class citizen don't 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 treat him like a genie in a bottle don't make him your problem solver and have no regard for him don't undermine his presence and his ways don't take his word and and shove it under a cupboard and pull it only out when you feel like it don't don't play down the things he has called you to do he is lord he is king he is ruler he is majesty. We look at him in all splendor that God 
fear him. Let's pray this morning. That Father, I'm opening my mouth today. And I'm calling upon you. I'm opening my heart this morning. And I'm recognizing you as king. I understand, Lord God, in order for me to walk in wisdom and understand it, I, I have got to understand the fear of the Lord. I've got to yield to your lordship. I've got to yield to your kingship. I've got to yield to your ways. Today, Lord God, I declare you Lord over my life. Come pray. I declare you master. I declare you ruler over my life. Lord God, I submit myself under you. Lord God, I cannot rule over my life. You are God. You are my God. You are my father. You are my ruler. You are my Lord. Father, Lord God, I come to you this morning with fear and trembling, understanding, Lord Jesus, that it's you that I submit under in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I come in reverence. I come in awe of your majesty and your greatness and, and the fact that you give me room, the fact that you give me space, the fact that you give me access, the fact that you give me will to come to you, to call on you and you God you ruler you king you master will answer me a sinner me the one who taps out of you so often and so easily me the one who is self-seeking me <laughs> The one who chases after bread and fish, me. The one who's not loyal to you, always me. The one who remembers you when things only are going bad, me. The one who frustrates you and does my own will, me. God, you give me. Jeremiah 33, 3, you give me access to call you and when I call you you are near when I call you like the crowd of 5,000 Lord God oh you recognize that I need a good shepherd like the crowd of 5,000 that you had compassion on you you have compassion on me, like the crowd of 5,000, Lord God, that you sat with and, and taught many things. You, you, you tell me great and unsearchable things. Lord, thank you that we can call upon you this morning. Come on, pray. Tell him you're opening your mouth to call him. Tell him you, you're coming with a hard posture that fears him, loves him, Ooh. wants to please him, wants to make him smile, wants to be a delight to him, wants to raise up an incense that is beautiful to his end. We fear you, God. We love you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Ooh. I've got one minute left. I really do want to bounce this in. Maybe you'll pray it in your own time. Psalms 147, quickly. Psalms 147, quickly. Psalms 147, verse 3. The Bible says he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars and he calls them each by his name. I love the thinking there because it makes you aware that from the top of the skies he can name and number 
the stars, yet he can be concerned with your broken heart. If you just look outside your window and just try to understand how many stars are up there, God says, they're not only a place there, but I've numbered them and I've named them. But 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 also I'm the God, Shaya Kamayaba, who is so mindful of your broken heart. I don't know who this one is for this morning. He is the God who places and numbers and names the stars, but he is also the God who binds the broken hearts. Call him. Call him. Call him. He, he, he is interested in, in bringing your heart back together again. Call him. He, 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 he is interested in healing you. Call him. <laughs> he has time to place the stars, name them, eh, and number them, but he, he, he is concerned about the state of your heart. Call him. Verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power is he. His understanding has no limit. He understands you. Hey, Rory, nobody in my life understands me. Nobody gets me. Nobody gets my vibe. Nobody gets the way I think. Nobody gets my wavelength. The Bible says he is our Lord and he is mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Call him. In verse 6, he says, the Lord sustains the humble, but casts out the wicked to the ground. He is your sustainer. Call him. In verse 8 says, he covers the skies with clouds and he supplies the earth with its rain. He makes the grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and the young ravens when they call. So call him. Ooh, I, I hope you understand the magnitude and the greatness of our God, that, that, that he, he calls on the rain, that he places the sky where it is by day and by night. The stars are not only shining, but they are numbered and named, yet he is concerned about you. Call him. In verse 13 of Psalms 147, he strengthens the bars of your gates. He strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. Call him. Oh, verse 14, he grants peace to your borders. Shaya mandiki bayaba. And satisfies you with the finest wheat. Call him. Call him. In him we lack nothing. Call him. In him we are not left abandoned. Call him. Ooh. In him he strengthens the bars of your gates call him he, he gives peace to your borders call him he multiplies fish and bread and sits with you to teach you many wonders call him what is it that you need Call him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness. Thank you that we can call upon you. Oh, Lord, that we may call you. I pray that we call you today, Lord God. Oh, I pray that we know that we lack nothing in you, Jesus. <laughs> you, you've placed and numbered and named the stars. You, you know the very hairs 
on our heads. You, you knew us before we were born. You have a great future and plan for us. You, you strengthen the bars of our gates. You bless the people within us and around us. You, you bring peace to our borders. You satisfy us with fish and bread. You sit with us to teach us great and unsearchable things. Lord, this morning we call upon you as our King and as our Lord and as our ever. Holy Spirit, help us to open our mouths to call you. Give us the utterance to, to call upon this great King. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that you are near. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, call him. He makes the heavens and the earth, the seas, and everything in them. He remains faithful forever and ever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts them up, those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner. The Lord sustains the fatherless and the widows. Hey, call him. I gotta go. Woo, we'll see you next week, Thursday. Next week, Thursday. At 7 p.m. And 5 a.m. prayer. I love you guys. We pray for you always. Speak God's blessing over you. His grace, his protection. As you close off this week, call him. <laughs> That's all I can say. He remains faithful forever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.